Introduction The violin, the instrument that I happened to choose, though considered one of the most difficult, I fell in love with it since I had begun learning it in my youth. I did not know where it would take me, but never did I expect to end up where I did, starting as an amateur at 13. By my 25th year, I, Fernand David, became concertmaster of the Gavotte House Orchestra in the city of Leipzig. The orchestra at that time was under the direction of Felix Mendelssohn, who obtained the position the same year I was appointed concertmaster in 1835. I thought my life had now been set. After having occupations with my violin here and there, my concentration could now focus on doing the work of concertmaster, an honorable station for a violinist. Yet it became more complicated than I anticipated. The job began to double as our conductor's busy career caused his absence more often than not. His work of organizing concerts and conducting rehearsals were left to me almost more often than him. Yet you most likely have not heard of me much in the history of music. I mentioned on the subject of the violin concerto in E minor by Mendelssohn. He wrote the concerto after I suggested he write one. It took him six years to complete but it became one of the greatest concertos in violin repertoire. Anyways, this book is not about me, it's about Mendelssohn. To keep you, the reader, interested in this biography, it will be in the form of a story rather than a boring old report. Most of this story will be factual, based on the letters of Mendelssohn. Some details and subtle plots start to add element to the story. Now, without further ado, I shall tell the story of the life and music of Felix Mendelssohn Barthold. Chapter 1. Reflecting. Year of 1815. In the earliest of memories that could carry one such through the times, from the woes and sorrows of life, from the feelings of dismay as well as heartfelt emotions, was that of the sweet vibrations of Bach preludes echoing from a well-tempered clavier. The melodies clear as day upon pondering over them, no other enjoyment could replace the fond memories of Bach's music tapped at the pianoforte, taken aback with every note by the one who played them ever so to perfection. Many would be in disbelief that the touch of the ivories was that of a girl at the tender age of ten. She is not the main figure of this story, but has the most important influence. This young and talented girl goes by the name of Fanny the eldest child of the Mendelssohn family. Her gift at the piano made her to be the musician of the family as her father, Abraham, felt quite sure of. Her mother, Leah, had musical skills and had begun teaching Fanny in her sixth year. Within a matter of four years, her abilities showed. The touch of the ivories were soft, then rose as the melody reached its climax. Sitting underneath the instrument, taking in every note, sat Felix six years of age and not yet had one lesson. Something, though, about the music fascinated him. With his mother and sister's talents, music already became a large part of him. Shelves containing manuscripts of music consumed this room of the house, the home in which the Mendelssohns resided settled in the city of Berlin, then of Prussia. As a family of the upper middle class, they had a decent standard of living. Abraham had a prosperous occupation as a banker. As the Bach prelude continued, Fanny neared the final cadence. Felix, a bewildered voice called. The piano's music halted as Elea entered the room in search. Felix came from under the piano. Felix, Fanny whined as she flipped through the page in her music book. You made me ruin the piece. Oh, now Fanny, it is not his fault. I startled you when I came in. Don't blame your brother on such things. You were looking for him, Fanny mumbled under her breath. Felix went to his mother. She had a French lesson book. You shouldn't go hiding when you know it's time for your language studies. You worried me. Sorry, Mutter. Felix shuffled his shoes against the hardwood floor. On you go, as I must give Fanny her piano lesson. Be sure that Paul and Rebecca are doing something productive. 
she instructed while handing him the book. Felix went off as Leia began Fanny's piano lesson. Felix sighed as he set the book down at the dining table next to his younger brother Paul. Rebecca's book laid open at the table, but her seat rendered empty. Felix huffed and checked the parlor next door. She was speaking with her father there. Felix turned back to the dining room and flipped to a chapter in the book he was studying. Abraham and Leah made sure that their children had the best education they could get, even as they were quite young. Rebecca had turned four and Paul was two. Abraham was in charge of teaching the children arithmetic and French. Leah taught them German, literacy, and fine arts. As Fanny being the eldest, Leah had begun teaching her the fine things of being a lady. Along with music, she learned art and poetry, as well as common housework, intellectual subjects, and everything in between. Felix knew within the next few years, Abraham would be teaching him the ways of business. His father's wishes were for him to carry on the bank in the family's name. The children had many opportunities and privileges in their upbringing, but it was far from easy. To make sure they got the most of their days, they were to be up every morning at the fifth hour for their studies. Paul was an exception since he was young yet. Only on Sunday were the older ones allowed to sleep in. Until the sixth hour, that is. Sunday was a rather special day. Abraham would invite members of society over as a social gathering called salons. He invited many aspiring guests, such as musicians, scientists, poets, authors, and artists. Leah made sure the best food and tea were served on the occasion. It was quite exciting each week. As Felix worked on his secular education with his siblings, he began to lose his focus. The door to the music room where Leah was giving Fanny lessons remained open. He couldn't help but listen. Fanny was learning a new piece. It sounded more challenging than anything she had played before, and she had a hash with it. Mistakes were prevalent. Felix had never heard her have such a difficult time. She had recently been taking up lessons with a local instructor. Her skills improved to the extent that Leia thought it best to find a professional. An accomplished pianist by the name of Ludwig Berger took up the position. He even composed some. Clementi, a composer known for the works at the keyboard, had taken Berger as a student years ago. Felix was familiar with Clementi's music since Leia taught Fanny to play some of his pieces. Leia still gave Fanny lessons by helping her with the music given. Lessons with Herr Berger were once a week. Leia's side of the family had a deep love of music. Sarah Levy, her aunt, had been a professional keyboardist in the 18th century. She happened to be a pupil of Wilhelm Elf Bach and supported the music of C.P.E. Bach, both some of the many children of Johann Sebastian. Felix, Felix, Felix. Abraham scorned. What is it that distracts you? Oh, it is nothing. Felix shook out of his doze and turned back to his French studies. After their studies, Felix tiptoed back to the music room where Fanny still sat, practicing. He brushed the door open, not to disturb her. She worked through a passage as he crept up behind her to get a look at the music. As he peeked over her shoulder, she vigorously struck the keys in frustration. With a huff, she got up and stormed out of the room, shoving past him. She left the music at the piano. Felix sat at the piano to inspect this music. It was a book. He turned to the cover, and it read as so. J.S. Bach, Two and Three Part Inventions, Works for Keyboard. It was the same composer that had wrote those preludes that his sister played ever so perfectly. It seemed out of place for her to become frustrated. He turned to the first page, Invention Number One in C. Felix had watched Fanny play dozens of times and tried to follow the sheet music. It bewildered him as to how she could read two lines at once. The melody lines looked even more complicated as things overlapped. He looked at the first bar. It consisted of a single strand of notes. He placed his fingers on what he thought were the notes and pressed the keys. Pausing, he veered to the lower line. It had a similar strand of notes as the first line continued on. He picked through it. The playing didn't sound at all correct. A Mozart this age would be laughing at such skills. Fanny had played segments of the piece with struggle yet the melody rendered distinguishable for her. As he continued in the slow, rather clumsy manner, someone walked up behind him. He glanced back and froze. 
His father appeared intrigued while reading the music over his son's shoulder with his spectacles. Felix chuckled in nervousness. Abraham then commented, I'll have your mother help you with that. That is when music began for Felix, at least the part about his mother teaching him piano at six. I wouldn't know every detail, as during those days I had not known him yet. At the time, I resided with my family, born in the city of Hamburg in 1810. The Mendelssohn family had lived in Hamburg before journeying to Berlin in 1811. It happened to be that my family took up residency in the Mendelssohn's previous home. Rumors went around after the Mendelssohn's leave of Hamburg. They had left in haste, leaving little behind. The reasoning alluded to their family's business, the Mendelssohn Bank. Abraham worked alongside his older brother, Joseph, who established the bank in Berlin. When the family lived in Hamburg, much unrest from France gave concern to the bank. It was later found that the bank had an involvement in swindling Napoleon Bonaparte of his attempt to take over Prussia. When the French emperor's reign of terror invaded the city of Hamburg, Abraham, in a trance, took his wife and children in the dead of night to flee. They went straight to Berlin, where Joseph occupied a house that also served as the bank's main office. We won't be discussing too much on the subjects of politics and war. There's other books for that. Yet before we continue with Felix's story, I'll give background on their family history. The Mendelssohn name had become well known in the midst of the 18th century. Abraham's father, Moses Mendelssohn, was a person of influence in his day concerning religion and philosophy. The family's heritage was Jewish. Felix and his siblings never met their grandfather since his death happened in 1786. Abraham wasn't fond of his father's beliefs. He wanted what was best for his children so they could get ahead in life. As to blend in with the common beliefs in Berlin, he professed his family to be Christian, having his children baptized. Leah and Abraham got baptized six years after their children. Some still were not fond of the family's past beliefs, such as Abraham and Leah themselves. Leah's side of the family was Jewish as well. She came from the Iztik family. They had impacts on cultural, religious, and musical history here and there. In wanting to separate from their family ties, both Leah and Abraham adopted the surname Bartholdi. It was a suggestion from Leah's brother, Jacob Salomon Bartholdi. He adopted the Bartholdi name from a property he happened to inherit in Lewinstadt. The name, however, didn't always appeal to the Mendelssohn children, as will be mentioned later on. Now, back to the story. The year drew by after that day Abraham happened upon Felix attempting to play Bach at the piano. His mother was now teaching him the technique of what became his new favorite outlet. Before becoming a pupil of Ludwig Berger, just as his sister, the family temporarily traveled abroad to Paris in 1816. Abraham had to go on a business trip and decided to bring the family with. Once arriving and obtaining a place to reside, Abraham had to tend to his work straight away. Leah and the children were left to find something to do in the meantime. Their stay would last at least a few weeks. Leah happened to know of a lady who had an accomplished reputation for teaching and composing at the piano. She was currently taking up residence in Paris. Her name was Marie Bigot. Leah thought it a perfect idea to have her give the children lessons. It would keep Fanny and Felix's practice up to par during their lengthy trip. Plus, having a different teacher in a foreign country would give them all the more experience. Marie's music was praised throughout European musical circles. She had lived in Vienna with her husband for five years. She had met Joseph Haydn, who adored her compositions, and Antonio Salieri. Her husband happened to be the librarian of Count Razumuski. Razumuski was the brother-in-law of Prince Lobkowitz. Both were patrons of music in Vienna, particularly to Ludwig van Beethoven. Lobkowitz famously had the composer's third symphony performed in his palace on June 9, 1804. It was a turning point in music from that day on. Razumuski played the violin and commissioned Beethoven to write three string quartets. The relationships between these people led to Marie to have a friendship with Beethoven. He was impressed with her playing. He had her be the first to play through his newly composed sonata, the Appassionata. Marie and her husband later moved back to France. She composed and introduced much of Beethoven's music to Paris society. Sadly, her husband was then taken prisoner in 1812 to Russia due to Napoleon's campaign. 
it left Marie to support her children by giving piano lessons. When Leia arranged to meet, Marie quickly became acquainted. She had much excitement upon meeting Felix and Fanny. They learned much from her, as she had many stories and experiences to tell. Fanny enjoyed Marie's input as a composer, as she so aspired to become. Upon returning home to Berlin in 1817, their grand-aunt, Sarah Levy, arrived by a planned arrangement. She had been inclined to come after learning of the children's musical progress. Almost as soon as she came, she herded them to the music room. Fanny performed some of the Bach inventions for her. She had become fluent with every two-part invention over the last year. Felix practiced a few short Mozart pieces. Sarah recommended that Abraham and Leia introduce them to Karl Zelter. He was a conductor, teacher, and composer. He led the Sing Academy Zoo Berlin, a musical society that hosted concerts. Originally, it consisted of only a choir. An orchestra was added after Zelter took the leading position. Abraham and Leia knew of him and the Sing Academy as they were members of the choir. Within the week before Sarah's leave, Abraham invited Zelter to the house. Zelter accepted and arrived one evening during the week. The first impression of Zelter made Felix believe him to be an old, stern man. Zelter wandered the parlor as the family had tea and visited. He stopped by the windows, holding his tea, to observe the outside. His thoughts seemed elsewhere as he sipped his cup. After tea, they all strolled to the music room. Felix happened to be standing next to Zelter as they gathered by the piano. Fanny sat down to play. Once she started, Zelter became deeply enthralled. She played the Bach pieces as she had for Sarah. When she finished, the old man turned to Felix. I'm told that you play also? Felix nodded and made his way to the clavier after Fanny stood. He played some various minuets of Bach and Clementi for Herr Zelter. Upon finishing the final chord, Zelter smiled. Excellent, a decent young musician. He patted Felix on the back. He then turned to the children's father. Abraham, I would be inclined to accept Fanny as my pupil and have her join the Sing Academy. I would be very willing to teach her theory and composition. She may stay a student under her regular piano instructor if you wish, but I'd be willing to give her instruction at the keyboard as well. I'd be happy. She does aspire to compose, especially after learning from Marie Bigot. Abraham inclined. Fanny couldn't wipe the smile from her face. Zelter then asked her, Pray, tell me, what is your age? Eleven, Fanny curtsied. Well, I shall plan to start teaching you next week. As for the young boy, I'd be willing to give a few lessons for a start. I'd like to see him join the academy within the next couple years. He looked towards Felix. Abraham nodded in agreement. Zelter smiled. Danke schön, and auf Wiedersehen, Herr Mendelssohn. He shook Abraham's hand. After he made his leave, both Felix and Fanny raved with excitement. Their parents for the rest of the evening felt a sense of pride. Their children were doing great artistically and intellectually. It made them feel satisfied with their work they put into their education. Felix continued his piano studies with his new teacher in the year of 1818. He had progressed at his instrument enough that at age nine, he made his first public performance at one of the salons his parents hosted. A virtuoso horn player, Joseph Google, provided the music. He needed a piano accompaniment for a chamber piece. He offered Felix the position. It was a horn duet by Joseph Wuffel. The performance turned out as a decent success. Much applause was given. Abraham and Salter were impressed, but weren't enthusiastic on too much applause, as it sometimes led to overpraise. From the first lesson with Salter, he learned more technique. He also taught the beginning concepts of theory and counterpoint. Felix became quick to realize that his instructor had a strict way of teaching. Zelter preferred him to work on the mathematical sequences of Bach, as well as the balance of Mozart piano sonatas. One day, while Felix sat at the piano at home, he felt inclined to read through a Beethoven sonata. He had become fascinated by the composer. Many musicians of the younger generation yearned to play the strong emotions that Beethoven conveyed at the keys. His music was revolutionary and had a feeling of power when one was able to play it. Felix heard various performances of Beethoven by attending local concerts and salons. The chords in his music were strong and inspiring. Beethoven was in his forties, still composing new and exciting works. By then, it was known that the composer's hearing was in slow decline. In his early thirties, his ears began losing their abilities. 
Felix thought that the first sonata of Beethoven seemed a good one to start with. He happened to find a copy among some of Leia's piano music. She had played it some before, and Marie Bigot played it when she taught Felix and Fanny. He set it on the piano stand and began to practice. By his next session with Selter, he could fluently read the first movement. The lesson went on as normal, with the usual exercises and assignments. After the hour of instruction, Felix mentioned with enthusiasm, I've been learning something new over the past week. Oh, it is hopefully not distracting you from what I assign. Selter had a half-joking tone. Felix shook his head. Nine, it is not a bother. It's quite fun. He dug through his sheets of music. He couldn't find the sonata. He left it at home. Felix sighed in disappointment. I forgot to bring it. Could you play some of it at least so I know what it is? Yeah, I have most of it memorized. Felix turned back to the keyboard in excitement. He began playing the opening notes that created the motif of the sonata. Before he hardly finished the motif, his finger stopped abruptly upon a hard flick against his wrist. He refrained from the keyboard and looked at Selter in confusion. The expression on his master's face made him conclude that he had done something wrong. Selter then scolded, I do not need my student to be playing such chaotic music as that. But I didn't get that far into it. What's wrong? The music of Beethoven is too loud and rough. My students play music that will help with their technique, not scribbled up rubbish. Selter gave his pupil an expression of disapproval. From then on, Felix thought it best to keep this music to himself. In 1819, Rebecca and Paul had become piano students of Herr Berger. Rebecca showed some promising talent, but her interest veered towards singing. She began practicing much with her voice, and it developed decently for her age. Paul seemed to enjoy the piano lessons, but he soon became intrigued by the sound of the cello. He was young and small for such an instrument, but many cellists that visited the home taught him some things. Paul would watch with every bit of attention. Fanny was quite consumed with the instruction of Zelter and attending the Sing Academy. Her regular practice consisted of the works of Bach and Counterpoint. She now, aged 14, could play the well-tempered clavier, book one and two all by memory. It impressed Abraham very much as he had requested she learn them. She now used most of her time composing music of her own. Felix became intrigued upon hearing her way of expressing music. He listened closely to the style. It sounded dramatic, but not in exaggeration. It had a mature sense to it. Felix knew all in all, this was Fanny. It excited him that his own sister could write such music. He began playing her compositions for his practice as well as to test them out. She liked having a second opinion. Felix commented while practicing her work. Soon you'll be just like Marie Bigot. I bet in a few years every pianist will want a copy of Fanny Mendelssohn's music. That would be quite the dream, performing in public just as Aunt Sarah. She gave a sigh as she pondered all that she would do. Felix continued playing. Their practice session made the afternoon hours that day some of the happiest. That evening, Felix sat in his room, doing miscellaneous things such as sketching and reading. He could hear that a conversation was being held in the parlor between Abraham and Fanny. It was too muffled to hear from his room, though. He didn't think much of it until their voices started raising into an argument. Felix set his crafts aside and went to see what it was about. As he neared the parlor door, he heard Abraham snap. It is not a proper profession for a lady. Soon after the remark, Fanny burst from the room in tears. She rushed straight to her room. Felix cowered a bit as he saw the fierce look on his father's face as he paced about the parlor. Felix quickly turned back for his room to not be noticed lurking by the door. When he returned to his room, he thought about what they could have been arguing about. He had only one guess. It made him sigh with sadness. His sister's dreams had been torn to pieces all in one day. Abraham did not want his daughter to have a public career. Felix didn't think it fair for his sister. At the same time, it made him worry about his own desires, but for different reasons. For Fanny, Abraham wanted her to marry someday in adulthood and concentrate on that. Felix's worries lied with the fact that he was Abraham's eldest son and would want him to put his interests in the family business. He knew within the next few years he would have to choose what he wanted, a career in music or a career in the Mendelssohn Bank. One choice would be more challenging to convince his father. 
but he was willing to stand his ground if need be. The thing that was ironic with his father was that Abraham had such an enthusiasm for music. He collected various manuscripts, sang in the academy's choir, and wanted his children to have music in their lives, but became the near opposite when a career choice was involved. Felix felt quite confused at times with his father's opinions and demands. The thoughts and commotion of the moment tired him. The day had been well and happy, but turned sour at the end. He decided to retire early for the night. Felix joined the Sing Academy soon after turning ten years of age. Most of his time he spent at the Academy, as it served as an educational place in many aspects. It had many events and rehearsals through the seasons. He sang in the choir among the altos. The music of Bach, Handel, and lesser-known composers were sung frequently. He became aware of the structural patterns of compositions, such as fugues and voice leading. Felix also took up the violin and viola. The lessons were from a violinist by the name of Edward Reitz. Reitz played in the orchestra at the Academy, but had recently joined the Berlin Court Orchestra. He was bright, instructive, and open. Felix looked up to him not only as a teacher, but as a trusted friend. He was only eight years Felix's senior. Edward was so passionate about the instrument he mastered, and it reflected. One of the many things Felix liked about him was his nice handwriting. When writing a few pointers in the music, the neatness of the pencil made it impossible to ignore. Edward Reitz was a good and pure musician. When Felix turned eleven, he became interested in composition. Fanny had used up all of her manuscript paper at the time. Abraham was in Paris, on business again. So Felix resorted to writing to his father. He made a request for paper, but his letter was rendered rather unspecific. Abraham penned back, educating Felix. My dear Felix, you must specify what music paper you wish to have. Ruled, not ruled, how is it you want it ruled? When I went to the paper shop, I did not know what to buy. Read over your letter before you send it off and discern whether, if addressed to yourself, you could execute the commission contained in it. Abraham. Felix eventually obtained paper and began composing, with the help of Zelter. The first work was a piano piece that seemed decent enough. Soon after, it was followed by 19 other piano works, a violin sonata he could practice for himself, a wedding cantata, and two comic operas. His pieces were performed at salons by ensembles of musicians, the little composer conducted by standing on a chair. Though he seemed to be quite busy with these first compositions, this would only be the beginning. 